Welcome back guys to Nino Kuni as we travel deep within these falls to find the forest guardian as it were. It looks like we're getting near map wise or at least it looked like we were for a second there. Is there something hidden in that bush? No, I completely missed all that. Ah, we are here indeed. We stand right before the guardian himself. Hold up, Polly boy. Huh? What is it? Listen, man. Someone's coming. But I don't. It's him. It's the flipping guardian. Steadfast defender of the forest. It seems we've engaged him in combat. Mighty boy, you have the most defense here. Don't dodge that. As long as we attack from behind, we seem pretty safe. Let's go grab ourselves his health. Ow, sir, your range is quite massive. Uh, keep dodging around his back. Seems Mighty's all tired out here. Time to switch back. I'm using the. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Looks like I need to defend here. Nickers, this looks serious, Ollie Boy. You best defend yourself. I was intending to, sir. You see the defend command, ain't it? Use it or you're in for a proper heading, man. I will do, I will do indeed. And flipping guard. See, nice one, Ollie boy. That's tidy. Defending against big moves like that can earn you a nice little bonus as well. So when he starts building up a nasty looking number, be sure to put up your guard. And cancel it for now. Let's use fireball on him. 18 damage straight off the bat. That's pretty nice. In fact, if we keep at this distance and throw fireballs, we're looking pretty good shape. Missed us quite nicely, thanks to the magic there, whoever that was. Ah, uh, defend! How's our chance for what? Look, Ollie boy, the big lump's only gone and knackered himself. Now's your chance to give him a proper walloping. Sure thing. Get in there, mighty boy. Why oh, you can attack with... Oh no, it seems he's got up again at this moment in time. Not good timing at all. I think time to switch back to Holly Boys, personally. Let's make sure my HP's all topped up. Defend nicely. Flat base, of course. We've got the chance here. And I say spells are the best way to deal with him. Tiny, that's a gold glim, man. That little beauty will store all your HP for you. Not only that, it'll also let you do a miracle move that doesn't use any MP, Tiny. But they don't hang around forever. Hurry up and grab it, Ollie boy. Where is this one? I'm behind him, I see. Defending quite nicely. Becomes supercharged, right. Burning hard, it says. For a finishing move. No problemo for Ollie Boy there, and the spells were just magnificent, and lots of leveling to do as well. Mighty Boy leveled up quite a bit. I'm gonna call everyone something boy now. Spirit of the Woods is an item. Okay, HP and MP improved quite nicely. You need to keep those MP up, so when we switch back to Ollie, we can use a barrage of spells. But defense went up quite nicely as well, which is what I'm pleased about. The Mighty, man, he's gained a lot of defense as well. Mighty learned Sandblast on top of that. 
You obtained a page describing the Guardian of the Woods. Crikey, that was a close run thing, man. The Guardian, he headed toward the deepest part of the wood. Do you think he's back to normal now? Your guess is as good as mine, man. But that weird look in his eyes is gone at least. I reckon he'll probably take some time out to get his head together and then he'll be right back to the old guardianing. But what made him go all screwy like that? You don't think it was... Of course it flippin' was. Had Shadar written all over it. We'd best watch our backs if we visit any more forests. Saying that, you get guardians everywhere. Anyway, we did what we came to do. We'd best get back to see old Dree, hey, sir. Sure, let's go. Tree face indeed. There's no politeness in Drippy's thing there. The serenity of the guardian of the woods hut has unlocked a story in the wizard's companion. You have been a trophy, in fact. You obtain a new tale of wonder. Hmm. You did well to calm the guardian of the woods. And I found what I was looking for. But first, a gift. My way of thanks. Gee. You are on a roll, by your man. I entrust to you one of my closest companions, the Telling Stone. His knowledge of our world arrives even my own. I thought he might help you on your journey. I'm sure if you ask him nicely, he will tell you anything you wish to know. And the other thing, the locket. This is what you came here for, is it not? It is a vessel for fragments of the human heart. To rescue the heartbroken, you will need the locket and the spells required to use it. I will give you those as well. Thank you so much, Old Father Oak. Hmm. Such a well-mannered child. Unlike some I can mention. What? I... All right, all right. Ta, Buckface! Hmm. Some things are as unchanging as the forest. No matter. You had best be on your way. Now, boy. You must come and see me from time to time. And tell me of your travels. I look forward to hearing of your progress. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. Let's be off, shall we? Time to head back to Ding Dong Dell and mend a broken heart. Okay. I'm just slightly worrying how we're- oh, yeah, he's now accessible from the main menu. I was wondering how we'd take him along with us. He's pretty big and looks pretty heavy if he didn't float. We obtained a locket. We received a page describing the Take Heart spell as well. And the Give Heart spell. Okay, we're getting quite a lot from that whole encounter there. What's the Telling Stone? Learn how to play the game and other useful information is what he does. Life lessons, creature compendium, dangerous places, and a progress report. We have 6% of the wizard's companion completion and 2% of the creature compendium completion. So not so much at the moment, there's other things to get completed there. We also got a book from here, or page from here. 12 Tales of Wonder, the second tale. Is it only one page we managed to get, or all of it? Indeed we did. Actually, maybe not, unless we're switching over to the other pages in there. Did indeed, there's only a few pages on this tale. Once upon a time, the whole world was lush and green and covered in countless forests. In the mild days of spring, children were playing in their clearings, making necklaces from wild flowers, while in summer they would shelter from the sun under their ancient trees. And in autumn, of course, they would pick and eat their juicy fruits. Indeed, forests have always been important to youngsters, being carefree places in which to play with gay abaddon. What do you know of the forest guardians? Every forest has one. They are believed to be godlike creatures that protect the woods they inhabit, as well as all the creatures that dwell within. But how did these guardians come into existence? No human knows for certain, of course, but it is believed that they are somehow selected from amongst the creatures that live in the forest. Naturally, since the Guardian is responsible for protecting all the forest inhabitants, the biggest, strongest creature in the forest is usually the one selected. There has, however, been one notable exception, as related in this well-known fable. I think I'll read you guys these tales as we get them. I think that's a nice touch, to have all this stuff in the backstory of the game, as it were. Accessible, but most people would probably just skip past it. A proclamation from the deities of the forest. A forest, luxuriant with leaves, was home to a gently flowing river and a spring that produced fresh water, and all the beasts lived there in amity. From amity? Not sure about that word. From tiny insects to creatures as big as two men. One day, the deities of the forest made a proclamation. The time has come for you to choose your guardian. 
for the Horus did not have a guardian at the time. As soon as the message was received, a controversy prevailed among the beasts of the forest, with each one claiming that he would make the best guardian. These sharp fangs will frighten away any enemy, growled the Black Wolf. These huge claws will shred imposters to pieces, roared the Grey Bear. And so it continued, with every large forest animal boasting his own case, from the stag with his great antlers to the white catfish who dwelt in the spring. The forest's smaller inhabitants, those who had no chance of winning any test of strength, could but watch this assembly of the beasts in silence. The bickering continued for several nights until one day, a golden haze descended upon the forest, bringing with it an aroma so sweet that the beasts soon forgot about choosing a guardian and simply spent the day in a contented daze, staring at the new golden colouring of the trees around them. The very next day, however, crimson saplings sprouted from some of the trees and quickly grew into a large tangle of red bramble. For the golden haze the beasts had so enjoyed was in fact a cloud of evil disposed spores. By the time any of them noticed, however, the bramble had covered the entire forest. The bramble strangled tree after tree, causing them to wither and die. It seemed only a matter of time before the entire forest would be quite devoid of life. Thus the wise owl said, Somewhere in this forest is a tree in which the spores first took root. That tree is the source of this terrible bramble. Cut off its source and the entire thicket will wilt. Desperate to save their forest, the black wolf and the grey bear resolved to find the tree that the wise owl had mentioned. However, the bramble had grown so thick and so dense that their great bodies simply would not pass through it. It was time for the smaller forest creatures to come to the fore, the ones who abstained while the other beasts had bickered and boasted about who was strongest. And so the mottled snake slivered through the bramble, moving deep into the forest in search of the tree where first spores took root. Alas, the bramble wraps the tree completely, hissed the snake. We shall need to cut through it somehow, but I have neither claws nor teeth, only this forked tongue. Upon hearing the mottled snake's report, the blue woodpecker leapt into action. I shall peck through the bramble in no time, he chirped with confidence. But as he neared the tree which the mottled snake had described, the bramble became too thick and he was quite unable to spread his wings let alone fly close enough to peck at the bramble, unless he went back dejected. That was when the field mice and the squirrels rendered their assistance. These sturdy front teeth of ours shall gnaw through the bramble, squeaked the field mice. But the bramble goes all the way to the top of the tree, observed the squirrels. Can you truly climb so high? The field mice had to concede that they could not, and so it was the squirrels who set off to cut through the bramble that surrounded the tree that had been first to succumb. The squirrels soon reached the tree and scaled it with ease. In no time at all they were nibbling at the bramble and making light work of cutting through it. No sooner had they begun to chew their way through the bramble than large parts of the thicket that covered the forest fell away and withered. And so the squirrels decided to continue nibbling until the tree was completely free of the bramble. Alas! The bramble contained poison spores and the squirrels who swallowed them soon felt the effects and fell lifeless to the forest floor. And yet this did not deter the other brave squirrels who had resolved to rid the tree of the bramble and save the forest at any cost, each of them continued to chew. The moment the last of the bramble was cut, and the entire tangle withered away. The last remaining squirrel fell from the tree, dashing its head upon the ground. The squirrels had saved the forest. When the black wolf and the grey bear were finally able to wade through the dead bramble, they came across the bodies of the dead squirrels and let out terrifying cries. As the animals' cries rang out, the squirrels' souls floated from their bodies as pure orbs of light. The black wolf and the grey bear watched in amazement, as the orbs floated into a hollow in the tree, bringing it back to life. The deities of the forest had spoken. The squirrels were the forest's true guardians. Though they were among the smallest and weakest of the beasts, their courage was greater than all of the largest creatures. Size has no bearing on a creature's stature. And so the story ends, the tale ends. I haven't even found the first tale yet. I wonder where to get that one. Hope you guys enjoyed a little bit of story time there. It took a little while. But I do enjoy reading, that's for sure. Right then, it's time to head back all the way. See what monsters we can face with Mighty at the fore. There's not going to be a bother for him anymore, that's for sure. We're all leveled up and all strengthened. I see Mighty Boy having a little bit of trouble at all. He's easily going to dash through everyone. Let's head out of the deep dark woods. Back to Ding Dong Dell. Lots of name alliteration there, isn't there? We may as well just call this place D-Land. Anyway, switch this round. We're all back from whence we came. Excuse me, sir, you won't catch me. You're a bit too slow. However, birdie boy, he might. Oh, we got multiple enemies now. I guess seeing we've got Let's go. Mighty with us. Here Defeat the sleeper fowl first, sir. He's the weakest and probably more troublesome if he gets sleep on us. But mind you, the pathing for these 
creatures of ours isn't exactly that good. Constantly ran into the bird there. Worldly gig. Thanks for the 602 back. The bird was providing a really nice blocking ability. Seven gold, however. We might not be getting much experience from these monsters now, but the gold is probably going to come in useful when we finally find a shop. Let's keep switching the camera around to ones we can see. There's a draw point over there past that river. I'm not sure if we can walk over it though, however. Excuse me, rhinoceros bloke. Oh, you charge straight forward, sir. Never going to catch me, that's for sure. Can we head over the river? We can indeed. Let's find what's here. You obtain a bottle of spring water. Come on then, Ouroboros. If you want to fight us, we'll fight. Another sleeper foul, however. Come on. Go, mighty. Here goes. Sleeper foul first up. He tried to heal the other one then, it seems. He didn't get away lucky at all. Just managed to defeat it just in time. We don't know all the abilities that these monsters have, to be honest, so we don't know when they might spring one on us that's a complete and utter surprise. Not far away from Ding Dong Dell now. Head round the right hand side. This mountain, anyway, which is the left hand side, which is weird. Technically, I'm right both ways. See if Fowl's gonna catch us, I feel. Come on! Go, mighty! Here goes! <laughs> One shot kill, nicely done. Mighty powers up. There's no problem with stamina at the moment, that's for sure. The experience gains are pretty small. Don't you dare chase us, sir. In fact, everything's chasing us. I think we're going to have to turn and fight at some point in time. Oh no, we've been back attacked, in fact. I really should just turn around. The enemy has the upper hand. There's two of them. We can do this. This is not a good thing. Ah. So I can't do anything at the moment. It seems like I'm being attacked by more powerful abilities than before. Don't you dare put me to sleep, sir. Beat him. Get our health back a little bit. We don't want to be back attacked no matter what. It gives us a long period of time where we cannot even act. We'll take the gold, however. We're up to 168 now. Ding Dong Dell's just around the horizon. Hello, Rhinosaur. Two of them, in fact. Let's go. Here goes. You should have a good time with this, sir. Attack the other one we can. Oh, well, he's too busy. Being back attacked. Excellent. There's no need to be worried, Ollie. Mikey Boy's got it. It's no problem for our little Mighty. So I assume that familiars will generally be more powerful than Ollie throughout the entire thing. There's going to be no real reason to have Ollie out, except for maybe bosses where we want to pelt with powerful spells or get healing touches flowing out. Let's go heal the broken hearted. Looks like he's still the worse for wear, huh? Mr. Drippy, we have to help him. Right, though, Ollie boy, I better explain how it's done then, innit? First thing you'll need to do is to take the locket Treeface gave you and fill it with the piece of heart our friend is missing. Uh, the piece of heart? That's right. One of the bits we're all made up of deep down. The bits we're made up of? I don't understand. Mm, how can I put it? Ah, just give it a go. You'll soon work it out, man. First off, what that guard's missing uh, is a drop of good old-fashioned enthusiasm. Uh, Find some and give it to him and he'll be right as rain. Okay, but where do I find enthusiasm? Well, now, feast your eyes on that other guard there. And, uh, and, uh, ha! He's got more get up and go than a sack of squirrels. If he hasn't got some enthusiasm to spare, I'm a monkey's uncle. Ask nicely, and I'm sure he'll give you a lend of it. Sure, I'll try my best. I think that overall reading the story gave that squirrel's comment a bit more oomph. 
Hello, sir. Uh, excuse me, sir. I wonder if you could do us a favor. I wish I could, I really do, but I'm afraid I can't open this gate without my colleague's permission. Oh no, it's not that. We just want to borrow some of your enthusiasm. Ah, well, if it's the enthusiasm you're after, I've got plenty to spare. Take as much as you want. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Drippy, how do I get the enthusiasm out of his, uh, heart? Look at the pages old Treeface gave you in your book, ain't it? It's a spell called Take Heart you need to cast first. Take Heart, huh? Sure. Feels a bit mean. It looks a bit worrying. Tidy! Looks like you've got yourself a locket full of enthusiasm. Now, you've just got to give it to our friend over by there. Okay, here goes. Are we still enthusiastic, though, so we haven't changed his character, as it were? Hello, sir. So we need to give this guard the enthusiasm we got from his friend, huh? That's right, Ollie boy. The spell you'll need this time is give heart, ain't it? I know it sounds just like the other one, but don't get him mixed up, whatever you do. Don't worry, Mr. Drippy. Give heart is the one for repairing broken hearts, so remember that. Now, when you cast give heart, you'll need to choose the piece of heart you want to restore from your locket. So you'll have to match them. Of course, you've only got one in there at the moment, so even you can't mess this up. Go on then, give that guard his enthusiasm back. Alright, here goes. I hate the thought of messing it up, that's for sure. Okay, we got multiple sections here. It seems that there's... Eight sections of a heart, all with different kind of abilities or personality traits, I'd imagine. But of course, we're giving enthusiasm. Beautiful! It worked! Neato! Uh, Tidy! Looks like he's back in the land of the living! What's happening? Where am I? Well, 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 you're back with us, I see. Yes, I, I feel so strange, as if a weight has been lifted from my heart. I feel better. <laughs> Thank goodness for that. I was worried about I'm you. sorry, I wasn't myself. But I'm back now, and ready to work harder than ever. Well then. These fine people have all come to visit our great kingdom. I think we'd better let them in. Indeed we had. <laughs> this way, everybody. I can't thank you enough, but I'm sure you'll receive your fair share of merit stamps for performing such a heroic feat. Merit stamps? What are those? You mean you help me without even thinking of the merit stamps you'd earn? You do have a merit stamp card, don't you? They used to collect stamps awarded for helping those in need. If you don't have one, you should visit Swift Solutions in town and pick one up. Listen to me, rabbiting on. I have to get this gate open. That's what you're waiting for, isn't it? Yes, please, sir. Tidy! We can finally go inside! Bit of Welsh. Not really working. Ding Dong Dell, the Cat King's Castle! We're finally here! We're finally in Ding Dong Dell! Here we are, Ollie boy! There were a few unseen snags on the way, I'll admit! But all's well that ends well, and I was going to take you to see old Treeface eventually anyway! Righto, on with the wand hunt! The king of this place knows a spell too. Let's see if he can help us, shall we? A real life king? Sure! I guess that means we should head for that big old palace over there, huh? So we'll head there indeed. Go and meet the king of Ding Dong Dell, but there's so much to visit, so much to explore right here. Welcome to Ding Dong Dell. If you're looking for the royal palace, it's straight down this road. It may do indeed, but there seems to be items around. Five guilders. Guilders seems to be the currency here, which is Dutch if I'm correct. And this I'd imagine would be an inn. Half cat lady, it seems. Proprietor. Oh, the pun. Oh, I'm sorry, we're not open at present. Please come back later if you'd like to stay the night. No problem indeed. Oh. More things here, however. Taint a cake. Another treat for our familiars, I imagine. Can't head through the door at the moment, though. So you can only enter at night then. 
Normally, of course, in games, inns let you sleep no matter what time of the day. Did you go for a pee, young girl? Yay, pee pee time! Okay, you're going in the corner. That's, uh, I'll go this way. That's fine. I don't really want a view. Can we not enter every single door we go to? I guess not. Maybe we can open a map? No, it seems that we go first person otherwise. So are these cat's paws a way to lead to the Cat King? It looks like it. So let's head the complete opposite way. Ah, oh, we can't head and look around. It's very mean of you, Strippy, sir. Turned out nice again, didn't it, Chuck? Jeepers. It's so different. Stop staring, man, it's rude. But look at those goofy clothes. Goofy? Are you blind? You are the goofy one around these parts. Huh? Ah, look at his funny clothes. Oh, just a bit huh? Crikey! We better get you a new outfit before they put you in the zoo. Come on, Ollie boy. Oh, okay. I'm sorry, Ollie boy, but no matter how trendy they are over in Motorville, your clothes are just plain out of place over by here. Are they really so strange? But this is all I have! Then we'll just have to buy you some more, won't we? There's loads of shops here in Ding Dong Dell, man. One of them must sell clothes, innit? I guess. Okay, let's go find a store where I can buy a new outfit. It seems that we have ourselves a new mission, a new quest. Fit in a little bit more, eh? And looks to the right here might be our option. Hello, madame. Do you sell clothes? Excuse me, ma'am. Do you sell clothes from this w uh, uh, I mean, do you sell regular clothes? Clothes, dear? Oh, hoot! I'm afraid we don't have any in stock at the moment. You an owl? Don't tell us that, mum. Have you seen how the boy's dressed? He's a flippin' embarrassment. He's getting funny looks wherever we go. My street cred is in ruins. Ooh, a fairy. I used to see your kind all the time, but I'll bet children these days don't even know who you are. You're telling me, kids these days, mum. Disrespectful, ignorant, downright rude. They wouldn't know a fairy if it kicked them in the flipping shins. Not like you, eh, missus? No, about these clothes. Yes, dear. Ooh, let me think now. Ah, now I come to think of it, there was a traveller who left a set of clothes here once upon a time. He bought a new outfit, you see, so he left his old one behind. Roughly human-shaped, is it? And <laughs> cheap. I shouldn't doubt. Tidy, we'll take it. And Mr. Drippy. Yes, yes, now I remember. He was the one who... Yes, he said they were very special clothes, made from fabric woven from the fibres of the sky tree, if I remember rightly. Lovely and comfy, extremely hard wearing and lucky to hoot. I think the only problem would be the size. If it's you who are going to wear this outfit, dear, I'll need a few hours to make some alterations. It would look huge on you otherwise. Could you come back tomorrow morning? Of course we can, man. How's about that then, Ollie boy? There's lucky. Neato, thank you very much, ma'am. Hoo hoo hoo, a pleasure, my dear. Toodle hoo for now, until tomorrow. Tomorrow's flipping ages away, man. I'd like to go and see the king right away, like, but we can't go till we've got your outfit sorted, ain't it? I guess not. But what will we do until tomorrow? I know, that guard on the gates is something about us getting some kind of card from a place in town, ain't it? Something Solutions, I think he said the name of the shop was. When we just went in, the Hootique. That's the owl one. Was it, uh, Swift Solutions? That's clever of you. That's the one. I knew it was some other kind of bird. Nice one, Ollie boy. The stores here sure do have some goofy names. You reckon? They're just named after what they look like, ain't it? Anyway, let's get over to Swift Solution, shall we? I don't think the stores in his town were that much better. We're going to end the episode here, guys, and look for Swift Solutions next episode. So join me for that, and I'll see you guys around for more Nino Kuni. Bye-bye. <laughs>